Hello. Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And this is going to be one of those recordings where I just just chat for a little bit. Just have a little chat. A chitty chat chat. And the subject of this thing is... An annoying ferret that keeps come waking up whenever I make a recording. No, the name, the subject is basically neighbours, noisy neighbours, perhaps I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But and the stress that can come from that. Now, I'm talking from personal experience here. It's one of my... One of my... I don't want to use the word triggers, but, you know, pet peeves. It's one of my... The things that I've struggled with for years and years. And I'm, I'm a lot better than I used to be. I don't get as angry or stressed out as I used to. But I've had six months without a neighbour. Because my last neighbour passed away. So I've not, I've not, you know, I've not had anyone since January. And now I've got a new neighbour or new neighbours moving in. And suddenly there's lots of noise. Now... I I sleep during the day. I'm awake at night. That's when I make my recordings. I'm making this recording at 12.30 in the afternoon. Which is not a time that I would normally make recordings. So there may be background sounds. Uh, I thought it would be quite a good time to make a recording such as this. If there was an example of some of those sounds that I'm referring to. And I'll be honest, there's my natural instinct is to get angry and then to get frustrated. Uh, The tension builds up and I don't feel very well, you know, physically feel unwell. If uh, there's suddenly a lot of activity, sound, you know, when I'm not used to it. Like doors slamming and stuff like that. And I started to look at it a little bit different. I thought to myself... How can I, how can I approach this differently to how I have in the past? Because for the last five years, I've been really lucky. The neighbour downstairs was quiet most of the time. And she didn't, you know, generally she didn't slam the door. I mean, I think they've, the neighbours downstairs slammed the door more more times yesterday than my previous neighbour did for five years during that time. So it's it, it's sort of a it's affecting me, but I'm trying to get my head around a different way of looking at it. 
in a sense of well how how can I think about this in a, in a way that will relieve my tension and relieve my stress so that it doesn't build up because that's what's happened in the past and I'm not pleased or proud to say it but in the past I've punched walls and hurt my hands uh, through frustration I broke my hand and you know it's when I was younger so I don't do that stuff anymore So it's a case of trying to get in touch with that. Feeling and get in touch with it. Allow it to be there. But without... Without letting it cause me suffering. I want to say allow it to be there. I'm not talking about the, the noise or the sounds or the activity. I'm talking about my feeling, my reaction to that. So I've, I've tried to look at it in a positive way. So this, this may, it may relate to this a little bit. It may not, I don't know. But this has been a huge cause of stress for me over the years. I mean, really, I mean, I've moved probably about 50 times since I was, since I left school. Yeah, about 50, 50 times. And I've lived in all, so many different places, different houses, sharing, you know, rooms, sharing a, a house, you know, like a room in a house and um, being woken up and all kinds of weird stuff happened over the years fortunately I've got my own flat now so the only real issue is just finding a way to emotionally cope with the increased volume <laughs> that is uh, has a that has arrived into the building And I think the main thing that probably, the two main things that is, that gets to me at the moment is the, the, the fact that I am awake during the night. Most people aren't. Most people sleep at night, awake during the day, and they're busy, you know, doing stuff during the day. So I can't logically expect other people to be quiet during the day. Even though I am quiet at night, I do. Um, but then that's kind of the right thing to do, isn't it? You know, most people are asleep at night. And the other thing is making recordings. It's thrown me off a bit because if I have to need, if I'm going to not be able to sleep during the day, which means I'm going to have to make my recordings during the day. And uh, it's going to be noisy. So, yes, yeah, there's a few things that are just building up a little bit. I've noticed it over the last couple of days. So, as I said, I was trying to figure out how can I address this in a positive way without letting the tension build up? Because that is something that I've done many times in the past and I don't want to do that anymore so I started to think from their perspective I don't know them I don't know the people but I do I remember what it was like when I moved in here and you know a degree of excitement moving into a new place but also a degree of stress with the move and how it's organised, uh, the you know electric and the gas and the water, getting all that connected and having to get a new car, you know, carpet put in and 
furniture and all of those kinds of things and adapting to the new environment and finding out where to get the buses and because I'm right in the sticks in the middle of nowhere but there was that excitement there and my dad came around and he was because he's an electrician and he was banging in uh, all kinds of stuff putting in coat racks and uh, bathroom cabinet and all you know he was making loads of noise and then we were painting the walls making loads of noise doing that so I probably made more noise moving in here than they have or equal amount I just didn't slam the doors because I know how to close a door quietly I picked it up and I think I learned that when I was a child but not everyone not everyone knows how to so I got you know not everyone has the ability to close the door it's, it's a complicated process <laughs> so I started to think well you know this is an exciting time for them This is, you know, maybe a new star in their life, as it was with me, in a way. Doesn't feel like that now. Five years later, it's just, just where I live. But when I first moved here, it was all new. And that's what it's like for them, I'm sure. And then, you know, I find out that they've got kids and the kids are going to be here. They're all running around and screaming and stuff. But then I start thinking back to when I was a kid. And the excitement of new, moving into a new house was pretty cool. I loved, I mean, I moved around quite a lot when I was a kid. It's funny, I did that when I was an adult as well, but I, I moved around. Um, yeah, probably about 10, 10 plus times uh, during my childhood. So, going somewhere new, there is a bit of excitement to that, especially when you're a kid, uh, going into a, a new house or an old house, but, you know, a new home, and sort of looking around and discovering what's there and trying to decide which bedroom you want to have and where's your bed going to go and all that stuff that's, I don't know, almost enjoyable, I suppose, to a small child, maybe. So I guess I've tried to look at it through both the adult eyes and the children's eyes. Of course, I'm not going to know what it feels like to be them, you know, not literally, but I kind of just, this is an exciting moment and they don't need a grumpy neighbor like me. Plus, I would never say anything anyway, no matter how much noise there was. You know, I've, there's, there's certain things I've put in place as preparation for these situations. And one of the things is I have wireless headphones. Which means I can watch telly. And they're noise counts cancelling ones as well, so I can actually put them on without any music, without anything, and it can you know you know makes everything pretty much silent. So that's quite you know it's it's nice to have that there if I need it. I've also got earplugs for when I'm in bed if I need that. I've had them in here. In fact, I was wearing earplugs before I moved in here. 
and I started wearing them here and I thought let's see if I can get get on without wearing them and I did so I've not worn them for five years but they're there if I need them I've actually got industrial hearing you know when people on the roads digging they have those industrial red um, earmuff things I've got some of those as well I don't walk around the streets in them because I just think they look too trendy and people who want to copy me just too fashionable so I've tried to look at it from their perspective even though it's imaginary it's not real you know I don't know what they're thinking or feeling uh, but the most important thing to me is how I feel And that might sound selfish, but it's true. You know, I have to look after myself and my own well-being, my own... I'm, I'm in charge of my own relaxation and stress control. You know, I'm the one. No one else can take responsibility for that other than me. So I need to do whatever it takes to ensure that I can keep calm. So it's not just the practical side of things which I've got. It's also forcing myself to be friendly. That might sound bad. What do you mean forcing yourself? Well... I don't naturally talk to people that I don't know. But I saw, well, I saw someone going in there yesterday and I said hello. And that was it. You know, I've got, I've got no interest in knowing them, but I will, I'll be polite and I'll say hello to the neighbours. In the past, I haven't done that. You know, it, Years and years ago, I would ignore people that lived in the same house sometimes. Especially if they were noisy. And I know not to complain because unfortunately, it's not, it's not going to be everyone's experience. And it's going to be different if you know the person before you complain, I guess. But I've moved into places, or, so, and some, or someone's moved in while I've been living there, and suddenly the whole house is shaken from their music. And I ask them if they can turn it down. And everyone's always generally being, yeah, oh, sure, okay. Sorry about that. And then, you know, 10 minutes later, it's even louder. And quite often I'd hear them moaning about me. How dare he knock on my door and ask me to turn my music down. <sighs> so it's not always ideal. So I don't go down that road anymore. Because I figure if someone's got music up really, really loud to start with, then... But they're inconsiderate. And I prefer to be with a, a happy, inconsiderate person than an angry, inconsiderate person. Because someone that's angry and inconsiderate, you know, they, can, <laughs> they can really, really give you hell. And I've seen it, seen that in action as well. So for me, it's about keeping the peace. Trying to adapt to the new environment. Try not to get into... Yeah, no, try not to get into the 
poor me. Like, oh, poor me. Oh, it's always happening to me. You know, the victim mentality. I'm trying, trying not to do that. And I'll be honest, being a victim is something that I do really well. You know, I've, I'm an expert at that. But I'm working and not doing it. I really genuinely am working on it. I've been working on it for years. So I'm better than I used to be. But it's still there. You know, it's it's a superpower that I still have. The ability to feel sorry for myself and to blame everything on <clears throat> excuse me, to blame everything on everyone else. To blame how I'm feeling on other people. To feel like I'm being prosecuted all the time but I'm persecuted by others when in fact none of that is happening. Or if it is, it's very minimal. You know, there's always going to be someone that doesn't like you. I've met met loads of people that didn't like me over the years. But majority of people have. You know, it's it's just a a tiny, tiny percentage. But they're the ones that can cause... It can be hard, you know. It's hard to have someone that's maybe seems like they're purposely setting out to cause you grief. So I try and nip that in the bud right at the start by being friendly now. Not too friendly. You know, I'm not going to, I don't want to find out their life story. You know, their favourite colour. What was the first, the first album they ever bought? You know, I'm not interested in that. But I'm going to be considerate. It's the old term, isn't it? Lead by example. And I hope that that works. So yeah, it's probably a weird recording in some ways because. You may think, well, what's this got to do with stress and anxiety? Well, if you've ever had a neighbour that was noisy, then you'll you'll know exactly where I'm coming from. You know, it could be, it might not even be someone you live with. Some I've got a neighbour who starts his car at six o'clock every morning. And it sounds, I don't know, it sounds, honestly, it sounds like a dinosaur trying to cough up a, uh, a fur ball. It was like, honestly, it's like a, it is really a weird sound. It's really loud. If I had the money, I'd offer to get it fixed. But I think it's supposed to be like that. I think he's tinkered with the uh, engine or whatever to make it loud. Bless him. But that's just one of those things. I mean, someone could move in with a motorbike. There used to be someone up the road that had a motorbike. And some motorbikes, you know, the good ones, are quite, quite, you're not particularly loud. Like the roadworthy bikes, but some of them are really, really loud. And but they're not illegal, you know. It's not breaking any laws. I tell you, it's weird. Years ago, I was actually crossing the zebra crossing. It was when I was at college, and it was first thing in the morning. I was half asleep, and someone had stopped now on a motorbike. And they revved their motorbike and it sparked you know, like really, really loud. And I jumped, I jumped, dropped all my stuff on the floor. It really made me jump. And people were laughing. A local photographer from the newspaper was taking pictures. No, that didn't happen. But yeah, it was very... 
I think I'm very sensitive to sound, to noises. Well, that's another thing. Changing the word from noise to sound. Because sound doesn't really have an emotional connection to it. Noise really does. Noise is an emotional word, isn't it? That's noisy. I don't think anyone's ever said the words, I love that noise. Oh, I wish I could hear more of that noise. Knocking on someone's door at three in the morning. Oh, please, can you turn the noise up? But sound, by changing it to the word sound, this is what I discovered years ago. And it might, it might seem weird, you know, I mean, just changing the word. But the word sound has no emotion connected to it. Or if anything, it's quite a calming word. Sound. The sound of the ocean. The sound of a, of a baby sleeping. The sound of my little ferret. That he makes when he when he sneezes, it's your, it's your. like that. That wasn't the best impression, but now that's a sound. It's not a noise. In my in my brain, that's a sound. So we're changing the word from noise to sound. It seems to almost eliminate the emotion that was connected to it. So that's a few things I've learned to do and I I felt a little bit inspired to talk about this because it's happening now. And you know, in the in the great scheme of things, it's not that important. But it's, this is my life, you know, so it's important to me. If, it, if something affects you, then it's important to you, isn't it? It doesn't matter if someone says, yeah, but it was an earthquake in Cambodia yesterday. You know, compared to that, this is your, your concerns are insignificant. We well, can't compare those two things. You know, what's going on in your life is significant to you. It's not distinguished, distinguished, extinguished, or eliminated because of something terrible happening in another part of the world. And I know it's about getting a perspective, but perspectives don't always work. Not when. I think perspectives work when we introduce the perspective ourselves as opposed to somebody else saying, oh yeah, but you know, look what happened in London. You wouldn't, you know, you're here, you're, you're okay, you're safe. You weren't in London when that thing happened or whatever. And just, yeah, it's true, I wasn't, but You know, let's just go away. <laughs> Stop trying to... It's almost like they're trying to put you on a guilt trip for being a human being with feelings, with, let's face it, reactions. So we can maybe look at that and say, well, instead of reacting, I will respond. Or at least, you know, give it a go. I think there's sometimes there's, there's that pressure that we put on ourselves, you know, even in a situation like that. So well, I'm not going to react, I'm going to respond. And then I react. And I've failed in my own head. But I haven't failed because I've noticed that I reacted. In fact, I may have noticed before I reacted. 
and eventually it can become or it can turn into a, a conscious response. I mean, I had a, a client when I was a counsellor years and years ago, and he had people, he lived near a field, and the, he was trying to move, but he couldn't get a buyer for his house. And the reason he was moving is because the field was every night full of young people drinking and swearing and all that stuff. And it was just getting to him, really, really getting to him, to the point where he wanted just to kill himself. Now, it might seem like that's an extreme response. And I think it was an extreme response. And I told him that. And not in that way, but I said to him, because I understood my own in my own experiences of having had noisy neighbours or people dealing with or, I I'll stop saying noisy soundy neighbours uh, neighbours that produce lovely sounds and I said to him. I'm not being rude or anything. Like, you're selling your house. It, you will sell it. You know, it's only a matter of time. You've had people come around and look. you had a couple of people that wanted to buy, but then they got, um, is it gefunked or whatever it is, you know, when it just fell through, you know, the, the, the deal fell through, which meant people were interested in buying his house. And I said, have you, have you considered getting some earplugs? He said, uh -huh. I said, well, I've got noisy neighbours and I wear earplugs at night. And my stress levels reduce huge amounts because I can't hear them, ultimately. You know, it's, it's not ideal, but it's got to be better than killing yourself. And he kind of just stared at me for a while. Almost, I thought he was going to chuck his sandwich at me. And he said, I, you know, I never even thought of that. I said, yeah, it's, well, you know, there are other options. You know, you're going for the, the most extreme, irreversible, uh, permanent option. I mean, it's like a permanent solution, is it called? Permanent solution for a temporary problem. So he did it. He got some earplugs and uh, it did the trick. In fact, just having a couple of nights sleep, he stopped worrying. He almost, because he couldn't hear it. And they weren't doing anything, really. They were just being kids, just teenagers playing in the fields and getting drunk and, you know, in the play field opposite where he lived. They weren't really doing anything and they weren't aiming it at him. They weren't picking on him, you know, chucking stuff at his window or things that, that, like that. They were just being annoying or they were, he was finding them annoying. So sometimes I think the, if it's a temporary problem, sometimes a temporary solution is all that's needed. And that was an extreme case, but it's a true case as well. And, but then on the same side, even something that's sort of from a perspective, perspective, back in 19, no, 2004, 
I was sitting in my house or my room trying to watch EastEnders and all I could hear was Elton John singing. It was a summer night. He was singing at the football ground which was just behind my road and it sounded like he was actually sitting on his piano inside my eardrum. It was that loud. Now, guaranteed, there must have been, I don't know, 20, 30,000 people there. All paying a lot of money to go and see him. Probably looked forward to it for months and months, maybe even over a year. Looked forward to seeing him. Some people might have even travelled from other countries to come there to see him perform on that beautiful summer's evening outside. And I got to listen to it for free. But I was annoyed because I was trying to watch telly. So it just it's different perspectives, isn't it? What might be a, a nice sound for one person can be just an annoying noise to another person. No offence to Elton John, but it was forced upon me. <laughs> I should call this title, the title of this recording, Elton John was forced upon me. So the main point of this recording is how to come up with some solutions for dealing with unwanted sounds. And I suppose particularly neighbours. Something that you can't control. I suppose that's one of the things is to actually recognize that I'm not in control of this. The only thing I can be in control of is my reactions. I can control the level of the noise volume in my ears by putting headphones on. I can go out. I can, there's lots of different options there. Or I can have some compassion. Uh, try and get in touch with how I felt when I moved in to this flat, which was pretty much a dream come true at the time. After all those years, 20 odd years, of living in little rooms and in ha shared houses and to suddenly have this place where it's self-contained, one bedroom flat, my own bathroom, my own kitchen, storage room, which is bigger than some of the bedrooms I've lived in, in the past, I've even got a loft. It's a very lofty loft. It's very dark up there though. And They're possibly feeling the same way, the new neighbours. But then I'm thinking, you know, if I sort of get into the feeling, there's a little bit of resentfulness because, or a little bit of sadness because the lady downstairs died and I liked her. She was younger than me. She was just not that much, a few years younger than me. And she wasn't very well. And of course, you know, she passed away. But in my brain, I suppose, part of thinking that's her flat. That's her home. How dare they move in? There's no logic there. There's no logic. It's not logical. When I... When I move out of here, for whatever reason, someone else will move here. 
regardless of what happens in my life in 40 years time, 50 years time, someone else will be sitting in this living room. Maybe 60 years, I think I'll probably, I'll make about 110. So let's say 70 years time. Someone will be sitting in here and I won't, it will be as if I hadn't even existed. Just like the people before me, they don't exist to me. I don't know them. I've never met anyone that lived in this flat before me. And these, these blocks of flats have been here since the 1950s probably. They've been here at least 50 years anyway. So I've been here five. So a lot of people have come and gone. So I guess it's noticing those things, what emotions are occurring and getting in touch with maybe a bit of reality. First of all, I don't know the people. They could be the most amazing people I've ever met. And even if they're not, it doesn't matter. It's got nothing to do with me. They're living their life. You know, live in a country where people are allowed to just get on with their business, you know. It's none of my business at all. Who they are, what they do. I think the bottom line is I'm not that important. You know, it's not all about me. And it kind of is. But in a way, it's, it's also not. You know, I might have this flat, but I share this building. Brilliant. Now the ice cream man comes. This is what comes from doing a recording during the day. See, see, automatically I get mildly annoyed. But it's only because I'm making a recording. I'm not even going to edit it out. I'm going to leave it in there. I don't get that at three in the morning, which is why I do recordings in the mor- in, like in, at night. But it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to do that anymore. So... It's a little bit of self-pity, a little bit of why me-ism going on. But then, you know, you could say, well, why not me? A self-contained flat, but I'm sharing a building. And the building is sharing the road with all the other buildings. And the road is sharing the roads with the rest of the town. Or the rest of the village. And the village is sharing, you know, the area with all the other villages and that make up the town. So, you know, it's everything is connected, isn't it, I guess. So just because I've got a flat here and the next door neighbour has got a flat, we're still connected. I mean, you can have a self-contained flat, but be sleeping, you know, a few inches away from the other person. Depending on where you're sleeping, you know, if they're sleeping in, in the next room and you're sleeping in that room, it could be like a foot between you. You could practically kiss their feet. Why would you want to? But, you know, that'd be weird. So, I'm just trying to get myself into that frame where I can try to see from different angles, from different perspectives. And what I find with by doing that, and maybe you may find the same thing, is... The emotion that was there, the frustration, the anger, the maybe a bit of hostility, 
the build up of stress and anxiety that was and the expectation of that as well the expectation of feeling stressed and anxious once I start to kind of stretch it out and examine it what happens is it it's now out out of shape it's no longer what it was I actually pulled my hands apart as I was stretching it and I felt quite a relief quite a release of tension there quite a bit of relaxation because it's stretched out and that's what can happen sometimes when we examine something and you focus on the different parts of it especially when it comes to something like something that's annoying you or causing stress or anxiety or anger it no longer has the same ability that it did before it's no longer the same thing as you've been looking at it from different angles, stretching it out, maybe taking a part of it off and looking at it a bit more deeply. And then that loses its strength that it, you thought it used to have. No longer has a hold over you, even though it never did to start with really. And you, you, you begin to feel different. Begin to notice that ultimately the people you're dealing with, you don't have to deal with them, but the people that your neighbours, and if maybe they're a bit louder than you'd like them to be, they're just human beings. You know, ultimately they're just trying to get on with their life, trying to do their own thing. And maybe you can lead by example. Possibly. I and mean, I always thought about it, you know, in a sense of if someone's got a loud television on in the next room, which has happened lots of times in the past. When I was very young, well, when I was in my 20s, I'd turn my television up really loud so that I could hear mine, and then they'd turn their television up really loud, and they'd go on to the, until the roof pretty much blew off because of the volume. So as I got older, I realised, oh, if I start off with having a fairly low-volume telly, not like, so I can't hear it, I don't want to have to, you know, have the television on my head in order to hear it but but have it as, as a as a normal volume rather than really loud because then maybe the neighbor who's just moved in won't think well they turn the volume up because you know what they might actually think because sometimes you don't realise how loud things are when you've got a neighbour. You don't know, because unless you go down to their place, into their room, or their flat, or apartment, you're not going to know what it, what it sounds like from their perspective. For the level of your television, or your conversations. So yeah, it's I just why I'd mention the subject really. I'm trying to look at ways of being more positive about it. Looking for solutions rather than 
focusing on and maybe discovering more problems, possibly creating more problems when they don't need to be there. And it feels quite calm. When I decide that I'm not, I'm not going to get all caught up in it like I used to in the past. And it's been 2011 was the last time I, had, I really had a noisy neighbour. So I've done really well. I've been 11 was that nine years? But I had loads, before, you know, over like a 20 year period. And yet I still reverted back to saying noisy neighbor. So perhaps I can, you know, do what I'm talking about and start using a different term. Using the word sound instead of noise. But soundy neighbour sounds weird, doesn't it? I mean, what, what could the title be? A volume... I don't know. I'm going to say volume impaired neighbor is inability, <laughs> inability to to be considerate neighbor, whatever. See, and then think calling someone inconsiderate. It's not the nicest thing to call someone, is it? It's it's almost it goes on different levels. Like it's calling them a name judging them and also saying that there's something that you're not or that there's something that I'm not you know because when you call someone inconsiderate you're basically saying I'm considerate you're not when nobody's always considerate I'm fairly good I think when it comes to these kind of, you know, being indoors and trying to keep quiet, but verbally, sometimes I, I'm very inconsiderate. I say the wrong thing. I've been doing it for years and years and years. Not so much now, but, you know, when I was younger. Last week. <laughs> so, that's it. I just... Again, I don't know if this has been of any use to anybody, but... I thought I'd just talk about the subject because I find it quite fascinating in how to deal with something that has been a constant issue for a long time over my lifetime, including when I was a kid even at home. So I had older brothers and they would be really noisy and playing music loud when I had to get up for school in the morning, you know. So, I think that's about it. It's either been mildly useful or a complete waste of 54 minutes. I don't know. I do know that Noisy neighbours can uh, result in stress and anxiety unless we do something about it. Maybe look at things differently. Allow ourselves to experience things differently. So 
So that's it. Thank you for listening. I will be doing a relaxation session pretty soon. Uh, And remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.